Hey everyone, this is Tony Thuces Tech. I'm Tony, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up your very own self-hosted email server for free. We're gonna be using something called CyberPanel. And you know, for the longest time, I resisted making this video because I personally know how hard it is to set up an email server in general. Now, not only do you have to get the emails sending and receiving properly, but in order to have your emails not be sent to the spam folder at the destination, you need to make sure that all of your DNS records are in place, like the DKIM records, the MX records, the PTR records, all that stuff, blah, blah, blah. But the reason we're doing this tutorial today with CyberPanel is because it takes the pain out of generating those records uh, by hand manually. There is literally done with a click of a button. So it really simplifies the process of setting up the email server. Um, now, I don't wanna make it sound like it's super easy because there are still a lot of steps and this tutorial video will probably be longer than most of my videos on this channel. Um, but my guarantee is that if you stick around to the end of the video, watch the full thing all the way through, by the end, you will have a working email server where your emails um, don't get sent to the spam folder because we've properly configured everything the way it should be. Now, the one um, aspect of this, the, the email server itself is free, right? It's open source software. CyberPanel is, you can actually look at the source code on GitHub or something like that, uh, but you will have to pay for uh, to host it. If you don't already have a server set up at your location, maybe um, you'll have to uh, sign up for some type of VPS, which is what we're actually gonna be using in this video. I'm gonna use a Linode server. I'll walk you through that process as well, but that does not have to be the case for you. You can use any Ubuntu server or any other type of server that you want in general. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get on into the tutorial here. We will start out in Linode, which is the server that I'm gonna be running my email server on. Again, this can be you know, a, a local server on your computer for all that matters. So let's go ahead and create a Linode here. I'm gonna create uh, my first Linode. And what this is, if, if this is confusing for you at this point, this is just me spinning up a, an Ubuntu server, a fresh copy of Ubuntu 20.04. So I'm gonna choose that here. And uh, there we go. So Ubuntu 20.04 long-term support. I'm gonna put it in Fremont, California, which is the location closest to me. Uh, I'm gonna do a two gigabyte RAM plan with uh, 50 gigabytes of storage. And then I'll type in my root password. And I'll add my SSH keys and create that server. So. Um, this is going to take a few seconds to boot up, but we do have an IP address here. And what we want to do with this IP address right away is go over to our domain name registrar, the place that we got our domain name from, and associate that IP address with the domain name. So um, we're actually going to be in this tutorial taking, um, we're going to be hosting our own DNS server on the mail server to simplify the process of all those DNS records that I talked about. So that's where we're gonna start setting up right now. So I bought my domain name, um, site1.xyz. That's the domain name that we're gonna use in this tutorial. So anytime I uh, talk about site1.xyz, just replace it with your domain name that you wanna set up a mail server for. Anyway, I bought this from Namecheap here. And what I'm gonna do is um, go into the manage section and. You know, like I said, this this will be slightly different for you wherever you bought your domain name from, but the concept still is the same. What we what we're doing about setting up the name servers is going to be the same thing that you have to do wherever you bought your domain name from. So I'm going to come on, on over here into the advanced DNS section and uh, come down to the personal DNS server, which is kind of like the same thing as a private DNS server and I'm gonna add a name server here. So the name server um, is going to be ns1.site1.xyz, and that's gonna be associated with the IP address of our server. And then I'm gonna add another one called ns2.site1.xyz, and then same thing associated with the IP address ending in 248. So it um, doesn't look like it's doing anything, but if you click on search, you'll see that we have those two records set up here. Now, the other thing we wanna do inside of Namecheap specifically is to come back to the domain section here. And instead of, um, when this loads, instead of having uh, basic DNS name servers, we wanna have custom DNS name servers. 
and here we will type in ns1.site1.xyz for our first one and ns2.site1.xyz and we will save those changes. So that basically what we did there is we just told Namecheap that our name servers is going to be located at the IP address that we told it. Um, so we're gonna have to set up the name servers on our cyber panel. Okay, so um, by now I think we can go ahead and check the status of this. It looks like it's up and running. So let's go ahead and log into that via SSH. So we can do SSH uh, root at the IP address. Hit enter. Yes, we can trust the connection so we can continue. And now we are logged into that remote server. Uh, what we want to do is to kick off the cyber panel install. So with the official documentation, this is how you do that. And I'll have um, all of these commands in this, this video linked down in the description below. So you don't have to type them from the screen. You can just copy and paste them. So um, sh, uh, we're going to pull down the latest uh, installer script and go ahead and kick off that installer. Now here, uh, it's just checking, make sure everything's up to date. It is, and we're good to go. So let's go ahead and do this installation. So what do we wanna do? We wanna install Cyber Panel. So let's pick option one here, type one and hit enter. And we wanna install Cyber Panel with open light speed. This is the free version of the light speed server. Um, option two is something that you'll have to pay for. So we wanna pick option one again here, hit enter. And it's asking us, do you wanna install Cyber Panel like in full, which includes power DNS postfix in uh, this FTP server. Yes, we definitely want to do this, especially because we want postfix, which is going to be the mail server that we're using. So capital Y hit enter. And uh, this next option here is asking us, do we have a remote uh, server? Meaning do we have a server that is uh, a, a database server that is external to our server? And the answer to that in this case doesn't really matter, but for us it is no. So capital N hit enter. And uh, do you want the latest version of the cyber panel? If you do hit enter, I'm gonna hit enter or you can specify a specific version. And then uh, we're gonna set a password here with S, hit enter, I'm gonna type in my password. And again. And uh, do we want memcached? It doesn't really matter in this case. I'm gonna say no, just to speed up the installation. Same thing for Redis, hit no. But if you want those things, you can hit yes. And I will uh, accept the watchdog here. So this is gonna go ahead and install Cyber Panel. It takes a good amount of time, five, 10, 15 minutes. So I'll pause the video here and catch back up with you when it finishes. All right, guys, I'm back and the cyber panel installation has finished. It prompted me if I wanted to reboot the server. So I went here, typed Y and that went ahead and rebooted the server. And now it should be up and online. So let's go ahead and check to see if that's the case. If we, um, if we just copy our IP address and open up a new window, type in that IP address and hit enter. This is good. I mean, 404 usually is not a good thing, but this is good. This means that there's something being served um, on our cyber panel uh, website, web server. Um, and in order to access the dashboard for cyber panel, we can tack on a colon 8090 here, and that's going to open up. Uh, well, you're going to get the, your connection is not private. So we can click on advance and proceed to the uh, the login screen, but this is how you are able to log into Cyber Panel. So if you remember, we created a admin user with a password during the installation process. So you can go ahead and type in those credentials and then go ahead and sign in. And this is the Cyber Panel dashboard. Now we're gonna do a lot of, um, a lot of things in here to configure our email server. Um, and right now there's three things that we want to take care of. Okay. We want to, we want to create a website. Okay. We're not going to put an application in the website. We're just going to create a website. There's not, there's not going to be anything served yet. Okay. It's just a website to create some DNS records basically. Okay. And then after that, we want to, um, add our name server here that we talked about from before. So we'll add the name servers here and we will add an SSL certificate for our email server too. So let's go ahead and take care of those three things. First, let's do the website. So if you come here to the left, 
click on websites, create website, or you can uh, go through here on one of these right here, websites, and uh, create a website. And this is going to be, we'll just select the default package here, the default owner here, there's only one owner, and we'll put in the domain name site1.xyz. And again, this is this is the domain name that's going to be, you know, if I make an email address, Tony, uh, at site1.xyz, that's the email, or that's the domain name that you want to put here. So site1.xyz, um, email, this is this is just a generic like administrator email, so I'm just going to put my uh, personal email here, tony at tonyteaches.tech, and a, the PHP version really doesn't matter unless you do plan on hosting a website here. Um, I'll just pick the latest version, and this is uh, this is where some of the power of Cyber Panel comes in. So we want to make sure we select DKIM support, which if you're not familiar, um, is a critical part of hosting an email server. It's one of those DNS records that we need to uh, make sure is configured properly. So let's go ahead and create this website. And again, this is not an actual hosted website. This is just like a container for a website. There's not gonna be any applications or HTML pages or anything like that. It's just uh, setting up some DNS records for us. Okay, so that was successful. Um, check that box. Let's go on to the next step and create our name server. So if we go to um, on the left-hand side, or you can go back to the dashboard here, that's where you see all the uh, options. These options are pretty much listed right here. So um, you can either click in here, or do DNS, and then create name server. And this is where we're just gonna put in the information similar information that we put in where we bought our domain name from. So um, our, our domain name is site1.xyz for me. The The first name server is going to be ns1. Dot, and then site1.xyz. Uh, we'll do the IP address in a second and then we'll do ns2.site1.xyz for the backup name server. And I'm just going to come up here to the URL and copy the IP address and paste that in here. So this is um, this is our self-hosted name server, and this should match up directly with whatever you typed in at uh, your domain name registrar. Okay, so we'll check that box as well. And now the last thing you want to do is create the SSL certificate for our mail server. So we can click on SSL and then mail server SSL over here. And the website um, is site1.xyz. This would not show up unless we added that website from before. So that's another reason that we created that website and then click on issue SSL. So now uh, that's gonna take a little bit to do, just a few seconds, hopefully not anything more than that. Um, I believe this also comes from Let's Encrypt, but I'm not 100% sure. This is, Let's Encrypt is like a free way to get SSLs. Um, that's done now. Yep, so it, it confirmed, that it does use Let's Encrypt as well. Okay, so we have all of that in place. Let's just do some verification here, see what's working, what is uh, ready to go. So if we ping site1.xyz, uh, we get information back that uh, the IP address is associated with that domain name. And that is, when, we, when we're making that ping, it's gonna go to our, our name server that we just set up. And, let's, and we can confirm that with pinging the name server too. So ping, Let's just ping name server one dot site one dot x y z, and we see that same IP address come back as well. So um, that's that's good to go. Now, the the next part in this tutorial here, uh, actually, let's just verify it one more time with a third party. Um, I'm looking over here at my my uh, outline here, and we want to check the DNS status before proceeding any for any anymore in this tutorial. So if we go to a website called uh, Ultra Tools and we use their DNS lookup tool, we can actually see what's going on under the hood with all of our DNS records. So let's type in the domain name that we're working with. In this case, it's site1.xyz, hit go. And now you can see um, some of the, the name, name server records and some of the A records, and some of the other existing records that we have set up so far. So we have our IP address here. Um, a text record for our mail server, which is great that that was automatically created for us. We have um, uh, a bunch of other records, like the name server records here that we configured, and we have another MX record down here. <coughs> Excuse me. And then the same thing for um, the other name server down here. So that looks good, and we can actually proceed 
Uh, what I'm going to do is pause the video here real quick just so I can um, understand what the next step of the tutorial is and then I'll catch back up with you when I'm ready. All right guys, so this next part in the tutorial is setting up a reverse DNS server and this is a very important part of this tutorial. It's not something you want to skip over and basically what, an, uh, what a reverse DNS server is is um, being able to look up a IP address based on a domain name, whereas like typically you're able to look up a domain name from an IP address. So it's just the opposite of a typical DNS server. And, and where we're going to do this is within um, Linode where we set up our initial server. So let me, let me just walk you through the process here. So back here in Linode, we want to come under the networking tab. And by default, they have a reverse DNS set up for um, something under their domain name here. We want to set this up with uh, site1.xyz. So we can come in here and edit the reverse DNS settings and hit, uh, or not hit, type in site1.xyz here and save. And as long as everything's configured properly, it will go ahead and save that information. Um, and when I say that, as far as your DNS server is configured properly, it'll be able to accept that value. So um, right here, we want to check with a, a similar third-party tool uh, the status of the reverse DNS lookup. So uh, we can use something here. We'll open up a new tab called MX Toolbox, and they have a reverse lookup tool. And we can hit Enter to uh, check that out. And I'm going to type in site. Or we can't type. We're, it's a reverse lookup, so we have to type in the IP address. So let me grab the IP address, which is back here. So this IP address ending in 248. Uh, we want to type this in. And we want to get back site1.xyz. And this does take some time to, to propagate. So we do see the, the old uh, reverse DNS domain name here. Um, this, I, you know, it, it varies. It could be anywhere from five minutes for this to update up to like 48 hours. So um, I'm going to pause the video here and um, I'll keep checking the status of this. But when it's finished, uh, we can make sure that we have site1.xyz here and then we can proceed with the tutorial. So uh, let's pause and I'll catch back up with you when that happens. Okay guys, I'm back about an hour later and the reverse DNS propagation has finished. So as you can see here on the screen, uh, the reverse DNS is now associated with site1.xyz, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want. So we can go ahead and proceed with the tutorial. And what we're gonna do next is to create an email address. So let's go um, into the cyber panel and come down to email and create email. So I'm going to make um, an email for myself. So we'll associate it with site1.xyz. It'll be tony at site1.xyz. And uh, just for the sake of this tutorial, I'll generate a password and copy that onto my clipboard. We'll use that and create this email. Um, that's created very good. That was really quick. So let's go back into the email section and access the webmail. Now we can log in Tony at site1.xyz and I'll paste in my password. Remember me, hit enter to log in and here we go. So this is our email inbox. Uh, let's test this out. Let's see if we can send an email message. So if you go to new message, um, I'm going to send it to Tony at TonyTeaches.tech subject and uh, will be, uh, actually, I actually think I have something over here, I have a pre-formatted email so I don't have to sit here and type it out for you guys. So just, uh, whoops, didn't want that. Put the body down here. So dear Tony, this is an email to test out my new mail server, blah, blah, blah. Cheers, Tony. Okay, so let's make this window like, uh, a little bit smaller, and I'm going to bring in my mailbox for Tony at Tony Teaches Text. So we can see this happen in real time pretty much, um, or however long it takes for this email to send. So let's go ahead, click the send button here, and as everything's set up properly, that'll go ahead and send. And uh, within you know a few seconds, we should see a pop-up, and we do. So here it is. This is from Tony at site1.xyz to Tony at Tony Teaches dot tech and um, Google even recognizes this as important which is good good sign that it's not spam and it is using the the encryption that we have set up for it so that's that's really good um, it works so uh, we'll reply actually we'll use one of their 
canned responses here. Glad to hear it. We'll send that back over, see if we can um, not only send messages, but receive matches, messages too. And um, there's a little bit of a delay because of the, the ability to undo the sending of emails. But if you want to refresh it, uh, see if it pops up, we can reload the message list here. And there it is. There's a response coming back from Gmail to our custom email server. Glad to hear it. Okay, so that's pretty much all set up. There's one other thing that I just want to show you guys that maybe um, you'll find useful as a tool in the future, and that is the ability to test the spamminess of your emails, okay? And we can use a, um, a, a free service called Mail Tester. So if you open up a new tab here, mailtester.com, um, like I said, test the spamminess of your emails. If we send an email to this email address, um, we can check our spamminess score. So um, that's a big part of this because of all the DNS records that, are, that we were working with and that we've been talking about. It's a good idea to know um, what other, I guess, email servers think of your email server as far as spam, because that's a big problem today is spam with emails, and that's what makes it hard to set up these email servers. So I'm going to use the same template uh, that we did before for our email. So I'm just going to copy that in and paste it in here. And we'll send the email, the test email, to that test email address. And that's on its way over there. Um, we can come back over here, check our score for this. And uh, it takes, I guess, 15 seconds enough for this <laughs> wooden paddle boat to get over to the palm tree. And we'll see how our score looks. And cross our fingers that we get a 10 out of 10. And we got a 10 out of 10. So um, uh, there's a little bit of improvement, I guess. And that is just based on the fact that we don't have a list unsubscribe. But that's okay. Um, we got a 10 out of 10 for our email server. So that's great. Uh, I think that means that we set everything up properly with CyberPanel. Guys, I know this was a long tutorial. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to help you out. And if you got any value out of this video whatsoever, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. Um, I make these videos for you guys. So, uh, and, and this one specifically for a lot of you asking for this type of video. Um, so I hope you appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video.